Hello, my soccer universe. The group stage of the Champions League is 50% in the books. And yeah, we get already for six groups, I would say, a very decided picture. That's headline one. Headline two, the Germans had around 40 ages and scoring goals like crazy, especially these guys. That's why Gladbach, that's why I decided to wear those and also to kind of have another uh, smaller team. Uh, that is in the Champions League wearing that, that one giving them a little bit props. Um, next headline uh, for the English teams, things went really well ex as long as you were playing in the late slot or you were wearing your home jersey. We'll talk about the one team that did not really comply <laughs> with that. <laughs> one, I think they did have a really uh, chance to do it other, otherwise. And then um, the last one is it was not a good round uh, for Italian and French teams. Spanish teams were relatively all right as well. However, not as convincing as say the English or the German teams as long as they were winning. So let's dive right into it. We have uh, a bunch of games to look at. Lock against Atletico. Um, Jimenez gave uh, Atletico an early lead in the 18th and it seemed to all be all rolling their way. Uh, interestingly enough, UEFA demanded of Atletico to wear white numbers, which I think was the right call because you can read them instead of the red ones. But then they get uh, one of those handballs. Yeah, it's covered by by the rules. It just doesn't really seem right that this is a, a handball. Uh, to me, uh, this handball rule, it needs to be intentional. And if you have your arm stuck out and I think it goes from your head on your arm, sorry. To me, this doesn't seem like a proper handball. Anyway, Miranchuk gets the equalizer. Then in the second half, Joao Felix really puts on a clearly except that no one scores a goal. I mean, he has been in great form. I think the hit wants the bar. Uh, there were great shots and saves, but they cannot find the breakthrough and it remains 1-1. One, one. Uh, in the other early game, these guys just rolled over Schachter. Literally rolled over Schachter. This was utter destruction. They pressed them to death, more or less. Playa after a nice line assist or in the eighth minute then an own goal from Bondar because he had a shot by Kramer was deflected. So I guess they had, that's why they call an own, own goal. It was a wicked deflection. Then uh, probably the goal of the evening with uh, Playa taking a really nice shot from outside of the box to make it 26 or 3 nil. And Benze Baini, yes, passive defending, but still. 4-0 in the 44th. Then if you make uh, mistakes, Gladbach was punishing you. This could be seen in the 65th. And then Plea gets also his third after Tiorama's assist in the 68th. Uh, they thought it was offside. No, it was not. So yeah, 6-0. Uh, Very resounding. The other German team that was playing, Bayern, had a much, much, much tougher route. Uh, Salzburg actually took the lead through Berisha. Uh, then it was... How the you know Bayern got in into the game? The first uh, is a penalty called that was not given. Then, uh, in my opinion, a clear penalty for Salzburg was not not given. That was a handball that I think could could, could be given. Then uh, another penalty is given to Bayern in the twenty first, and Lewandowski steps up. Salzburg really playing aggressively, and Bayern had to work really really hard. And if it wasn't for some passive Salzburg defending, where Müller then just. Uh, Slams the ball onto Christensen in, 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 who puts it in his own net. Bayern probably would have not uh, gone with the lead into the half. In the second half, Salzburg a little bit sitting uh, back, but uh, still punishing Bayern. And they get uh, the goal through Okugawa, who just came on before that. 2-2, two, two, and you think, really, game on Salzburg, maybe getting a little bit too excited. And uh, ironically, Berisha Kanka comes off and Onguene and Defender comes on. And Jerome Boateng in the 79th makes a goal and then all the flood goals gets open. Sané, who came on a little bit further, just makes a slalom through the Salzburg defense. It's 4-2. And it wouldn't be bad if they wouldn't punish more. Uh, Leo Lewandowski with very artistic movement uh, makes it 5-2 and the route is complete when Hernandez in stoppage time. There were only two minutes of stoppage time. <laughs> it's 6-2. It was really not, not even... 
this was nothing of 6-2. This was, yeah, if Bayern wins this 3-2, I think this would, would be more and more deserved. The referee really not doing favors to Salzburg as well, I have to say. Uh, there were two or three occasions where, honestly, um, a good re referee would have decided for Salzburg. There should have been at least one penalty, penalty for them. Not that I pitied them, but it's got to be said, um, you feel a little bit hard done by with this result. Uh, a very strange game was Real Madrid Inter. It was a super entertaining game. However, uh, Inter does not get uh, their worth because uh, they have many good chances. But whenever they try to go forward, they get hit on the back. And yes, uh, their defending was atrocious. The first goal was a gift by Hakimi, who is basically close to his the, mid, the, the, the midway line and placed the ball back into Benzema. Yes, he probably was checked out of bounds and probably this was a foul that should have been at least looked at. I'm not sure why this wasn't. Um, so yeah, there was a little contentious bomb, but you know, even the Inter players didn't really real estate. Then a uh, corner for Real, Real Madrid, and who should you watch out for? Benzema? No. Sergio Ramos. And if you watch the replay, Sergio Ramos is, even as the corner is kicked, there is no Inter player there to actually take care, take care, care of him. He has basically a free header in the internet. Sergio Ramos, who I think scores now a hundred, his 100th goal, as a or over 100 goals as a defender. Now, uh, it's crazy. I mean, this is um, suicide defending, I, ha I have to say. However, Inter comes very quickly back with a very uh, nice Barella assist, who had hit the bar before. Uh, he basically flicks it with his... Uh, heel into Martinez's way, who in the 35th can make it 2-1 for Inter. And that actually gave life to Inter again, who fully deservedly to get the equalizer in the 68th. We're pressing forward to get the win. And what happens? You get hit on the counter-attack. Vinicius Jr., it may have done touch Malzema because it was not going into the path of Rodrigo, who then puts it in for 3-2. And then Inter was broken. Uh, Inter again underperforming. Uh, they are not un, 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 unperformed, but the goal scoring is not where uh, the game is. They don't get the results they would have deserved. And even with uh, Lukaku, even without Lukaku, they did well now, but no, didn't work out. Porto against Marseille was basically over uh, once Payet misses the penalty in the 10th minute. Uh, I have to say, I really like uh, like the jersey matchup, and especially the Marseille jerseys were nice, but Marseille, zero points, zero, zero goals. It really is not looking good. M Musa Marega already getting one. Then uh, Corona, <laughs> makes it, I think Tecatito he has on, 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 on the back. He was outstanding. Uh, he assists the first goal. I think he's fouled for the penalty. And then he assists also the third goal for Porto. Uh, Man City also doesn't really have many problems in this game uh, against uh, Pier, uh, Olympiacos. The only thing is, pro is probably that they really didn't f uh, play full because, you know, Liverpool is on the way. Ferran Torres uh, gets the goal after De Bruyne assists in the 12th minute and then they waste chances, have many shots and goal. It just does, doesn't go in. It needs to lay down Gabriel Jesus and uh, in, in the 90th Cancelo to seal the deal 3-0. Uh, I was really low looking forward to Atalanta Liverpool. Yeah, one team showed up and one didn't. Atalanta, I have to say, Atalanta at this point in time does not look good. And they are, we know they are slow starters. And they, uh, that could be again the downfall. Yes, they had some really horrible re results at this stage last year in the Champions League, too. So I wouldn't count them out just yet. Uh, however, their goal difference is now completely done by. Jota ran riot. I mean, the first goal, he really nicely chips this over the goalkeeper. The second one, uh, <laughs> what was the Atalanta defense think, th thinking? He, uh, he completely takes out the defender, pulls, pulls it in the net. Then for the second half, Atalanta seemingly had, had a plan. Let's push forward. We're going to win this one. Uh, or, or we can at least get a, get a draw out of that, like we did again against Ajax. And then on your own corner you're caught on the counter as Salah just runs 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 and puts it in the net. I think Salah felt uh, well because you know from a Roma player and so Atalanta and Roma have this weird rivalry there. Uh, two minutes later Mane and then another uh, six minutes later or five minutes later Jota and the route and it could have been even more. This was utter destruction of Atalanta 
did not look good. And yeah, uh, Atalanta has players out with uh, due to due to COVID. They are not really in that great shape at this very moment. Um, and you have been found out a little bit with your really aggressive play. If you have a high high line against the very very top teams, you are gonna pay and pay they did. Um, Ajax also had initially many ga uh, player players out, but then uh, COVID tests on the same day had at least Tajan, I think Onana and uh, maybe a few others playing as well and that paid off immediately. Tadic assists Anthony after a bit more than 40 seconds. It's 1-0 for Ajax. Then a back pass picked up by the goalkeeper. I have not seen this in a long time. Uh, when the rule was announced, you saw this a lot. And yep, yeah, Tadic promise tips it up for Tadic. Tadic just slams it in the internet from five meters out. So uh, that was easy. And you thought Ajax is cruising. And I have to say those black Ajax jerseys with, with the gold actually don't look all the bad. Ajax has, has a very underrated jersey uh, kit set this season, I have to say. But then once Dreyer puts one back, uh, Mitchell suddenly had chance after chance after chance and probably would have deserved more. Um, more out of this game. Yes, uh, Anthony had a goal this off for Ajax, but Midtjylland definitely had the chances to get the first Champions League point. Then let's move on to uh, Wednesday. Zenit and Lazio. Uh, a rather even game when it ends 1-1. I mean, I have, have, have to say that goal by Arokin, the Juba assist was really great and I don't quite understand why Lazio was playing in green there. I think the light blue will, will, will have done, but maybe both played in their way. I don't recall now what... Um, I probably did because Zenit has all the so they both played in their wages and might do so in Rome as well because they're both in light blue. And both teams are very well known for their super right wing wing fans. So I mean that's basically a brotherhood right right there among among the fans and many Russian fans were there. Uh they could allow twenty thousand. Um in the second half, um Lazio pull, pushes a little bit forward, gets the equalizer through Caicedo, uh, who could have uh, scored before uh, as well. Milinkovic Savic had a few um, interesting uh, shots and goal. Then, very, very late, uh, seemingly winning goal for um, Zenit is disallowed for offside, rightly so. And then we come to the freak result, or is it, of the evening? Uh, United had beaten PSG and Leipzig rather convincingly. And you knew against opponents that have the ball and want to play, you can hit them nicely on a counter check, and this is where Leipzig is good at. To be honest, uh, I actually expected that Bajak here will get something, but that they will look so comfortable against United, that's something I did not, not expect. The first goal, I mean, Edin Vischer plays a deep ball, and I, I think Bar starts in his own half and is free on goal because United is committing everything forward. Um, and Vischer, when he, when he makes it 2-0 in the fourth, for, for, it was very well deserved and you thought really, yeah, there is something uh, brewing. Martial uh, got a goal back, but United didn't have a shot on goal in the second half until very, very late when the uh, ball was cleared off the line. Um, I think the best thing about United were those away jerseys, which I, well, third church jerseys, which I'm really strongly con considering at this moment of at least at one point getting that but at the, i mean what what's wrong with united <laughs> you you gotta say i know I, I i don't want to pile on on the coach but something's not right against good teams they're performing well against bad teams it doesn't look good and that's not the United way. You need to grind down opponents. Uh, the other English team, Chelsea, had much less trouble but were definitely helped by the referee. Um, Werner gives them an early penalty. Then I think Ren had a claim for a, for, for a penalty which I could un understand. But what happened then just before the half, um, the, uh, a shot is taken by Abraham. I think it hits Dalbea's foot and then goes on his chest and hand and that's a penalty. And in addition, a yellow red. I'm sorry. Already the penalty call. And what VAR was thinking there. I mean, this needs this with you. You can clearly say it goes from a foot on the chest, on the hand. Uh, the slightest of ta ta touches. Maybe, maybe I can get with the penalty. But that you give her ye a yellow red and deprive Ren of any chance seemed just harsh and not fair at all. 
Tim Abraham makes it then, uh, Werner conversion, and Abraham makes it 3 0 after Rhys James, which was the first time since 2012, I think it was Terry to Lampard or, or, the, or the other way around, that um, two Englishmen uh, combined for a Champions League Chelsea goal. That I found an interesting tidbit. In the same group, uh, another crazy game. Sevilla, first 50 minutes. It was only made of time until a goal is scored over them, but this goal comes through Suleimanov, who really expertly converts a free kick. Um, and then a uh, penalty is given for uh, Krasnodar a few minutes later, where also, yeah, this was a penalty. Uh, and it is 2 0 for Krasnodar. Um, then there was a penalty. Was there a penalty call for Sevilla? Pro, 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 probably, but what was the scene? It was not the penalty. There was some, 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 something like that. There were many, many, many pen penalties on, on Wednesday early on. Um, Rakitic pulls from back, but then you see another blow for Sevilla when um, Krasnodar player runs on to goal and Navas just uh, ahead of the box clips him and he sends Sands off of the red car, card, but with 10 men. Sevilla can turn, turn it around uh, in the series, scoring both goals in 69th and 72nd. Uh, Krasnodar desperately trying to claw themselves uh, back in, but nope, was not the order to be. Uh, Club Rouge probably felt well after the performances so far against Dortmund, but Dortmund, first the referee had to be changed, and then Dortmund just rolled over. Azar gets in the 14th, then uh, Holland with two attempts uh, first by head then by foot in the 18th and then he gets another one assisted by Meunier in the 32nd kills the game and Dortmund yes another te uh, German team scoring many uh, goals three it's not it's below the, av the average for Ger 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 Germans in this round but still uh, very convincing win and they kind of then shifted a few gears back because Bayern is coming up next weekend Barcelona uh, is here says a 2-1 victory and it seems easy yeah Messi gets an early penalty Maybe there were a few chances, but if it wasn't for Ter Stegen, Barcelona would have lost that game. Uh, Ter Stegen made three or four great saves. Uh, the uh, defense was a shambles. Yes, the young goalkeeper saved a nice messy free kick. Gerard Piquet gets the 2 0, and you think that every, everything is done and dusted. No, Tsigankov 10 minutes later pulls one back. Again, after a great save by Piquet, but there's no one to pick it up. Uh, not Piquet, um, Ter Stegen. Testing saved by bar, bar, bar Barcelona, and again Barcelona will limp as group winners into the next round. I have to say they had one the convincing performance against Juventus, but Juventus also not the great. However, Juventus gets another important away win. Morata, uh, Cuadrado sets him up. Maybe it, Ronaldo touched it. Then uh, the German commentator made a lot out of his goal celebration with Tiamo, and you know told a lot of story about his wife, and that became a running joke in the whole uh, thing. Uh, Ronaldo then also sets Morata up in the second uh, half uh, in the 60th. Uh, Morata actually tried to set Cristiano, but it didn't quite work. Cristiano had a free kick that, yeah, he's, he, he's not quite there. And then uh, Ferenc Varos, who now played in the home church, jerseys, not the black and uh, why you had to play in orange. If you play in the black and green ones, that you just play, play in you, we can play normal, we have a normal looking game. Anyway. Uh, the goalkeeper then twice spills the ball to uh, uh, to uh, Dybala. Um, I think he scored ball, both goals, but the last one is by Diwali because he had a, a misfortune. It's a goal line clearance that went in a goal. Ferenc Varsh can put one back through Boli in the 90th. Um, Leipzig PSG, another one of these uh, games that you cannot quite understand because for the first half it was all PSG. Di Maria after Moise Ken, Upa Meccano uh, was pressed by Ken, who gets the ball, plays it to me, Di Maria, very nicely. Then Upa Upe Meccano, handball. Di Maria steps up, um, very poor penalty, very poor pen penalty, is easily saved, uh, and there the game kind of, kind of got deep because Leipzig had a good, 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 good chance before the penalty, but then uh, despite PSG being bad, I think they had. Uh, Overall, two offside goals called off. Um, I have to say, if PSG would have been a little bit more concentrated, they could have put Le Leipzig away in the first half. With Nkunku's equalizer uh, from Angelino assist, uh, they allow Leipzig back in the game in the second half. Yeah, it's 
stupid penalty call. I think it was uh, Kim Pembe who got the ball on to, on on to send. Very clear penalty. Forsberg uh, converted on. Then if you get two players sent sent off, there's no way back. And at that point, Leipzig had clearly control of the game. This was a game the PSG lost. Absolutely. Yes, there was no Neymar. There was no Mbappe. Uh, so it was a little bit of a make make sure squad. But you still had enough quality to beat Leipzig there. So yeah. Uh, put yourself into trouble and Tuchel's uh, seat is shaking very, very much. So let's look at the standings here. Uh, the picture in most groups is very, very clear. You see Bayern and Atletico are going through with Bayern will win this group and will probably already qualify after the next game. The Group B is one of the most open ones. Slight advantage, Gladbach and Real Madrid at the moment, but I, this is everything but decided here. Uh, C is pretty clear. United and Porto seem to be the class of this group. In Group D, uh, Liverpool, we can count them through more or less, sim similar to Bayern. Ajax and At Atalanta will battle it out for the last spot and I think Covid will have <laughs> a big say in that one. Um, then if we look at uh, Group E, also very clear, it's on all, all on all clear who's going to win the group, Sevilla or Chelsea. Uh, group E is one of the little bit more open ones, but I think uh, Dortmund and Lazio are slowly se separating themselves and Lazio also. If they could have a full squad, I think Lazio will already have a little bit more points. Uh, they play with makeshift squads now in both away games, but you know, they have many home games. I think Lazio at the moment looks at least safe. Same Barcelona, Juve and then Group H, uh, three-way race. Um, that United could have decided that, but at the moment, yeah, it's United and Leipzig. But, you know, PSG plays at home, at least to Leipzig uh, again, and away to United, maybe they can do something. Overall favorites, yeah, you see it back there. It's still the Guardiola trifecta that uh, leads up there. Liverpool a little bit behind, then Dortmund and Chelsea, Atletico and Real Madrid going up, but Real Madrid not that high because they have a tough group to get out of. Uh, newcomers in this top is now suddenly Lazio, where Schachter is just hang, hang on, and you see um, Inter and Atalanta keep dropping. Ajax now moving move up, and Gladbach is also in there. Gladbach should be on this wall, but they decided to wear them, so that's that. The next round of fixtures, of course, we have uh, the same fixtures just in reverse, but we'll start on Tuesday with groups E and H. I think the pick is here PSG against Leipzig for sure. I think that's a huge one. Uh, and let's see what United and Bajakshi here will do. I also have to say Lazio against Zenit uh, is probably a very intriguing and big matchup already there. Um, and in the other groups, again, Gladbach will play early against Schachter, but I think it is Inter against Real Madrid and uh, whatever is happening in Group D. Uh, Liverpool, Atalanta should probably now one way game, but we'll have to see how this goes. Um, that would be interesting and Atletico Madrid better beat Lok Moscow as well to give them good chances there. Long video, but I think it was well worth it. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I want to hear your opinion on this round. As I say, after three rounds, I think five, if not six groups are relatively clear already. And then we have two uh, really, really interesting ones in B and H. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, I get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!